Hi everyone, I hope everyone has an amazing day. In today's episode, we're going to see how to create object collision using JavaScript. For first of all, I'm going to show you a simple uh, tutorial demonstration, how we're going to make it. We have an object which is stable and uh, an object which is uh, moving according to our mouse, axis, y, and x. And if I move my square, this square with my mouse onto the stable square, you're going to see that as soon as we hit the border of the stable square, of course, our moving square is going to make uh, the background red. Let's hit it from the bottom of the square, again red, from the right side red, top red, and left side red. As soon as I leave, leave the uh, border of the stable square, my background is making black. Now let's make this tutorial with programming and JavaScript and see how this progress is making our life easier. So I've created a folder named Collision Detection. And uh, here we're going to make some files, which is index.html. We're going to use our HTML file inside style.css in order to style the squares. And of course, obviously, we need app.js in order to write our JavaScript code inside. So let's bound every single file between them. Exclamation mark, I press tab and I create the document HTML automatically. And in here, above in head, inside head, I link my style CSS. And in body, I link my JavaScript file. Okay. In body section, we're going to use uh, two divs with class player, which is going to be our moving square. And uh, the other one will be the uh, object, which is going to be the stable square. Okay, that's all. Now uh, make our style.css. Let's program it. I'm in my CSL style CSS file, but I want to open my index.html with a live server and make it side by side comparison and see what's going on inside our Chrome browser, of course. Obviously, I put for every single object margin zero. I give the padding zero. I say box size, border box in order to make our uh, style CSS object, every object and every single uh, tab to be inside our window. Chrome window. I give body background black and get rid of this white background. Press save. Okay, we get rid of. I get the player class and I get the object class and put some style to them. I say position absolute in order to move them in my desired position inside my Chrome tab. And I say I give height 100 pixels. I give the width of 100 pixels and I press save. I cannot see anything, right? This is because I didn't give any border styling to them. I will give border with three pixels, solid, and the border Color will be white. Okay. Now we have two divs, but the other stitch on the top of the other. This is because we didn't give any uh, separate position to my object and to my stable square. I'm going to make them right now. For my object, I'm going to give, I'm going to close this site. Is it okay? I'm going to style it as follows. I'm going to give top 50%. I'm going to give the left 
bit percent once again and I'm gonna make it exactly position to the middle of my browser transform plant rate minus 50% for X axis and minus 50% for Y axis let's hit save and my stable square is stitch into the middle of my browser as you can see okay put it again to the side of my okay how can I move it let me see come on okay give a little bit space to my VS code and say Z index minus one. I want to my stable object to stitch beneath my moving object. And I'm going to give another uh, class named touch. This is independent class. It's not even in my index.html file. This is because I'm going to add it to my uh, object as soon as I hit the border of my stable object in order to give another color and say yes I hit the border of my stable square I'm gonna give it background red okay that's all so I cannot move my uh, moving square because I didn't uh, plan any uh, JavaScript code but here I'm gonna say also some more I'm gonna say cursor none I don't want this cursor to be inside my browser and overflow hidden in order to prevent any uh, unwanted uh, scrolling event in my uh, browser okay the cursor is gone but now I cannot even move it I'm moving now to my app.js file and program it okay I'm getting the player object I'm gonna say document query selector I'm gonna say player object and my stable square object document that choir selector which is gonna be the single one oops excuse me query selector and I'm gonna get the class of object which is inside my HTML that index index that HTML file so in order to uh, detect if it's uh, have we have any collision with the stable object, I have to do an invent listener inside my window named mouse move. Let's do it now. I'm going to say window dot add event listener. I'm going to get the mouse move event. I'm going to do an arrow function to, according to ES6 rules. I'm going to get the event of each individual uh, mouse movement inside my browser and here I'm going to get two things I'm going to get the object bounds which is on my object and I'm going to get the get bounding client rect this is uh, for Detecting if it's my uh, position of my moving square is meeting my stable square. Each time I move my mouse, those, uh, how can I say, mm, those values are changing each time I do this. Each time I move my mouse, my uh, values of stable of my moving square is changing, and my object bounds is main remain the same. 
So get player bounce equals player that get bounding client rate. Okay. Now let's move my uh, moving square as soon as I move my mouse. Give oops, sorry. Why each time is making my life difficult, right? If that client x for my x for axis, I get this plus save. And now, as soon as I move my mouse right and left, my moving square is moving, but I cannot move it upside down. Up and down, of course. Let's program it also. Let's copy it. Paste it inside. And for my top value, I'm going to say for my client, Y. Okay. Now I'm moving it in my free will link. We don't have any uh, scrolling event as I assume my square hits the bottom of my browser. But now, you see, I don't have any background changing and any uh, collision detection. Let's do this now. So, make it easy, okay. Uh, come on, thank you. So, make it here. Let's my if statement work. Player bounce, bottom, okay is bigger or equal to object bounce.top. This means that my bottom value is changing to the bigger size as soon as I go from the top to the bottom of my uh, browser. This value is changing to the big one. But in my uh, stable object square, this value remains the same and obviously my bottom will be more bigger than the top of my stable square. Yes, condition one inside. Let's check if we have the condition two, number two. Player right, player bound, right is bigger and equal to object bounce sorry object bounce dot right dot left excuse me this means each time i'm moving my uh, uh, moving square to the um, left side of the screen my right value of moving square is increasing okay but to my stable uh, square is remain the same that's why this statement will be true as soon as we hit of course and let's go to my third statement which is player bounce left will be less and equal to object bounce that right which means that my left value as soon as I hit to the left side of my screen is getting less okay because it's getting minus I'm putting minus value to my uh, left side of my moving square so the third statement it's okay so go to my one two three fourth statement and once more and end player bounce top is 
less and equal to object bounce bottom which means that my top value is decreasing as soon as I hit my browser's top section, moving to the top section. My moving square, moving to the top section of my browser, my top value is decreasing. So if this condition is true, then I'm going to say player that class list that add touch. Okay. I'm I'm adding the class touch, which means my moving object hit the stable object. Let's try it now. Do I oh my god. Okay. I have to make myself smaller and move myself here. Oh no, it's okay. So let's try it. Oh, yep. We hit the border of my stable square, but I left the uh, stable square, but my background did not remove. Let's make the uh, opposite, say else. If this statement is not true, then say remove this condition. Remove this class, of course. Okay. And let's check once again. I hit the border of my stable square. I'm inside the border. The condition is true, 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 true. I left and my square is back again to black. You see? Once again, let's move to a bigger screen. Condition true, 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 and left. And this video is like this. If you like this video, please give a big thanks up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching once again, and see you in my next tutorial. Until then, bye-bye.